Belgium is not a nation. It's an artificial creation. Come on, Belgium. Nigel Farage, yet again, was recently having a go at the Belgians. The truth is, there are two parts of Belgium. They speak different languages. Come on, Belgium. Come on, Belgium. They dislike each other intensely. Among those sitting listening to him, the former Belgian Prime Minister, who incidentally dislikes Mr. Farage intensely. Giva Hofstad kicked back on Twitter the message, come and have a go if you think you're good enough. Stefan de Mol knows all about World Cups, having played in two of them for Belgium. With some silky skills, I helped him to relive his glory goal against the Soviet Union in Mexico 1986 when Belgium reached the semi-finals. <laughs> I dedicately raised Belgium's years of hurt. De Mol played in the team that agonisingly lost the quarter-final to England in Italia 90. David Platt scoring a last gasp winner. David Platt. Yes. When they when England beat you. And chipped in. <laughs> and volleyed in. And it's there by David Platt. England have done it. Despite that defeat, De Mol knows only too well how football and success at the World Cup can help unite his nation historically divided between Flemish and French-speaking Walloons. When we came back to Brussels after the semi-finals, it was like a national, national holiday, national party for everybody. And this uh, kept on for about four years, even uh, when we played in Italy. We were proud to be Belgium, not about Flanders or about Wallon. Uh, we were proud to be Belgium, and I think this feeling is, is back now. <laughs> Les Diables Rouges, the Red Devils, as the team are known, celebrated in yet another World Cup song. The Belgians are churning them out like chocolates. Across Belgium, the Red Devils brand is everywhere. But is it more than skin deep? We travel to Louvain near Brussels to the old Stella Artois factory. Now the headquarters of a PR agency whose campaign four years ago successfully forged an emotional bond between players and fans. For the first time, they, you really had like this national feeling of we're all in and together, we're all, you know, looking ahead, uh, we all want to become the world champion. Players and fans set each other challenges, which went viral. They painted themselves red. They played some sumo football. There was no political statement behind it. Uh, but it was really to unite the people behind the team in itself. Uh, everyone was united for once, um, even if it was not a political objective, it was the consequence. Despite the success of the PR campaign, efforts to unify the nation around the Red Devils have been caught up in Belgium's divisive politics. Inflamed by the rise of hardline Flemish nationalists. But it feels like Belgium's quite divided as a country. It's true, it's true, no? Sometimes, We're yeah. Sometimes, but in times like these, it's not. Because yeah. it's really when, um, with the World Championships that we're really like one country. Flemish people, people together, yeah, together yeah, yeah. to stick together. And when we are um, sticking together as a whole country, they don't like yeah, this. well, they don't, they like so it. So they don't but, like this yeah. kind of things to happen. They're yeah. like, oh, I don't hope that like, the national team is going to make it to the World Cup. because. It's they don't like make, that. No, because it's going to make like a national feeling from the people like, oh, we're Belgium and blah, blah, blah. And they don't like this. Events like these bring people together in a really like positive way. And it is temporary because you cannot keep up this kind of energy, you know, that's around it. So that's always going to be temporary. In this Brussels cafe, loyalties are split. They're rooting for their motherland, Morocco, against Iran. But many support Belgium when they're playing too. Stars like Marouane Fellaini, Vincent Company and Lukaku are key to the Red Devil's chances and reflect a modern Belgian identity. I think it's uh, very important that we can unite the country because you see too much, um, too much political stuff that divides the country. And it's sad, it's sad because Belgium 
is small, we could be, yeah, we could be great together. Yeah, we because have like different languages also. We have French, German and Dutch, of course. So with football, we are all just one. Belgium is great, sir. Great. We are maybe yeah. small, but great. 3 0. Oh my God. You see? That's Belgium, baby. That's Belgium. What's also very Belgian, baby, is the glut of World Cup songs like this one and worse. I went to see one of Belgium's leading musicians to find out what the heck was going on. Yeah, so here we go I again. played him one of the more extraordinary World Cup songs I'd come saying? across. It turns out they weren't even Belgians, but Dutch, playing to the stereotypes. What's going on here? Uh, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Nigel Farage may have sent them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is absolutely. Look, they're flying on chips. What is going on here? Belgians concede their songs lack a certain quality, but Dan sees the football carnival as a unifying factor. I think the solution would be to, to stop uh, listening to politics and just play football for four years uh, in a row, and then <laughs> the next four years, and then there, there wouldn't be any problem anymore. Dan was about to let me in to a little secret. This is a World Cup, your own World Cup song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds like you're channeling your inner ABBA here. Yeah, we could play a little girl. <laughs> 